Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabanson, and welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. Today, we have a mess. Uh, we have a mess that is taking place in the sports world, uh, and it's an absolute damn shame because I feel like um, a mountain is being made out of a molehill. And it's an absolute, it's an absolute, it's just, it's just crazy. But before we get into it, uh, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. This is a topic that we did not have planned. Um, I was actually about to go out and get my hair cut. Then I came across this audio here and I was like, okay, I have to chime into this topic here and get my thoughts on it. Uh, as you guys know, there was that blow up that took place yesterday on ESPN first take um, on the panel featuring Monica McNutt, Stephen A. Smith, uh, Shannon Sharp, uh, and Molly Karam. And they were talking about a whole bunch of things. They were talking about the Caitlin Clark, that dirty play on her. They were talking about the coverage of the WNBA. Um, and then towards the tail end, um, they then said, Monica, Monica McNutt then says to Stephen A. Smith, you know, you could be doing, you could have been doing this years ago, three years ago, talking about the coverage of the NBA, uh, the WNBA. And Stephen A. Smith was taken aback. He was totally like you could see that he was visual, vi vi visibly like just 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 he was stunned that she would say something like that to him on live uh, television. So what we want to do is want to play a little bit of what was discussed yesterday on television to give this show a quick backdrop, and then we're to come back and react to those and, and really get into what we want to talk about. Take a listen to some of what was said yesterday. We all agree that this play Definitely. was unacceptable, but in general, this is still competition. That's my biggest mistake. You're well, right, Shannon guys. Shannon ain't gonna say it. I look it, at other people Sh as Shannon, I see myself. Sh Shannon ain't. Oh my God. Right. Go ahead, Shannon Stephen ain't a. gonna say it, but I'm. Shannon ain't gonna say it, but I'm gonna say it. The word is resentment, and I'm talking about what I feel about this whole conversation. Nobody said all. Nobody painted the WNBA with a broad brush. We're talking about a girl that a young lady that has come into the sport and is contributing to the financial backbone of the WNBA and simply imploring everybody to see the big picture and how it serves to benefit the whole. And because we brought that up, it's turned into a conversation with I, that resentment, <laughs> jealousy, whatever. I'm saying, yo, the resentment is legit, but it's also justified if you've been in the league busting your tail to help uplift it and then somebody comes along and before they play 10 before they play one game you're just you're, you're, you're labeling them the savior a lot of people men a bunch of men would feel resentment towards that too but we bring mm -hmm. it up here and all of a sudden we got to safeguard and couch every little syllable when we're talking about competition and we're talking about the league and we're talking about revenue and money and how everybody wants to get paid the, what's the maximum salary in the NBA, in the WNBA M and M, isn't that like two hundred and forty-one thousand or something like that? Is two, that is yeah, that's like two fifty. Mm -hmm. Two, two mm -hmm. fifty, right? Yeah. Two, 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 two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. These girls are stars. They can, they, they, they do it. They do commercials now. They're gonna be making dollars upon dollars on Madison Avenue, and they deserve it. We're talking about them maximizing their great potential. And because we bring that up and talk about what potentially might get in their way, which we do to men. All the time. Now we got to sit up here and watch every syllable. I resent that, and I'll leave it. All at right. That. So let me. So let me. I know we got to go to break. I know we got to go to break. Welcome to the world of being a woman, Stephen A. And how you have to dance about your word choice, and you have gotcha. to please everybody and anybody as you navigate your being. We are talking about the world's greatest. How about being a black man? B okay, being black. Hold on one second. Have you, have you... So, so this is what I'm saying to y'all, though, and I know we got to go to break. And we didn't necessarily go there, and maybe we should. There are so many layers in this conversation around the way we that don't... it's being discussed. When you, right, no, no, no. And yes, Shannon, I know y'all are going to say you know, and Stephen A., I know you're going to, you, you just shared that you have talked about the WNBA on your program, too. You guys may not have said everybody, but the prevailing sentiment for folks that are just joining the WNBA and following women's sports is unfair to the women of this league, to your point, who have laid the groundwork for Caitlin Clark to come in and now take it to the next level. That's all I'm saying in these conversations. Kennedy Carter's behavior is not indicative of the entire league. We are still talking about competition where you are allowed to get a little extra elbow in if you are competing and you do it within the parameters of the game. The game is physical. Caitlin is helping to grow the league. These women understand that, but she cannot be babied as a rookie. That's all I'm at.
All right. Who talks about the Let's Who talks break. about the WNBA? Who talks about women? Who talks about women's sports more more than more than first take? Stephen A. Respectfully, with your platform, you could have been doing this three years ago if you wanted to. Wow. All right, we gotta wow. go. To, you wow. guys. So, so did you, you say that's the guy, But who does more for, than, than Stephen us? Stephen A. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Wow. Don't do that. I'm talking to you about the oh, power that you have. Okay. I'm talking okay. to you. <laughs> Okay. It's, okay. It's, All right, let, let's, I got you, it. my guy. But I I'm got talking it. to you. Got, I got guys, it. guys, guys, guys. I really you, you appreciate missed, you're my girl. But you've missed a lot of episodes of First Take. You missed okay. a lot. Stephen, guys, three years ago, you would not talk about the W Wait, at Mom. this level. Don't do that. Guys, guys. Nobody re- was, Monica. Guys. You making hey, Stephen A's point, hey, Monica. Hey, Monica, yeah, you making please Stephen A's point. Let me do my job. Please let me do my job. We've gone for 40 minutes straight. It was a riveting discussion. I have to get into commercial break. Fantastic. So you heard what was said yesterday. So today I was going through the internet and I came across a clip. Uh, let me see. Where's the channel that I got it from? It was from around the association. And it says Kerry Champion defends Monica McNutt against Stephen A. Smith and um, against Stephen A. Smith and Charles Barkley. Now, here's what's interesting. I want to quickly read something before we get into our comments. Jamel Hill, who Stephen A. Smith spoke about in a, in a nice way. She goes, FYI, I was doing first take before it was even called that. Uh, it was originally called Cold Pizza. And before Stephen A. Smith and before Stephen A. Smith was a regular and then a permanent Coles on the show. Now, when Stephen A. Smith has the show, quite frankly, he had me on twice, I believe. It was a huge opportunity, one he did not have to extend. I'm not sure what that has to do with the topic, but hey. It ain't my debate, but this idea of making people is odd. So that's what she said. Now, Carrie Champion, who used to be a former moderator on ESPN First Take, she decides to jump into the fray and she decides to basically scold Stephen A. Smith on the choices of words that him and Shannon Sharp are using, which was in this case, jealousy and words like that. And basically saying that they have no business using those type of words when discussing uh, w- women's sports. So what we want to do now is want to play exactly what Carrie Champion had to say. I want you guys to listen to it in its entirety, and I want to come back and react to what Stephen A. Smith, uh, what, this, what she had to say. Take a listen to that there. And you all said most of my male friends, a lot of my male friends, have said that they feel like the women in the WNBA are jealous of Caitlin Clark. And I and I take issue with that word jealous, and I'm going to tell you why. I don't think, and let me just be really clear, Caitlin Clark did not ask for this attention. Caitlin Clark did not want this attention. Caitlin Clark, from what I can tell and what I can hear, it just wants to ball. She's a baller. She just wants to play basketball. She did not ask to be the mega star, but she is the mega star. People are looking to pay attention to Caitlin Clark. It makes perfect sense. I understand it. Yes, there may be some jealousy, Yes, there may be people who don't want to see her succeed and they feel like, guess what? I have been here since its inception. I've been holding down this league for so long, these last however many years. Why did she get all the attention? Sure, that's probably a thing, but that's not the overwhelming sentiment. And I want us to stop being so simple. When we discuss women's sports, and by we, when I say men, when you all discuss women's sports, don't make it just about women being jealous of other women. That is so simple and that's so unfair and that's not what we should be doing. It annoys me more than anything, I promise you. Because women can have other opinions outside of being jealous, which is why I wanna hear more people like Shanae and Elle and and Andrea and and Monica and Carolyn Peck and LaChina and all the other women who've been covering this sport and and by the way it's not just the women Ryan Rucco shout out to Ryan Rucco and Rebecca Lo, uh, Rebecca Lobo they have been covering this sport and they know that there is a nuance here for people like Charles Barkley to have such a big platform and say oh these women are petty and they're jealous like that's sim- that's simple to me that's super simple. I need you to go a little more deep than just jealous. Maybe they're resentful towards the WNBA. Maybe they feel like the WNBA did not do what they were supposed to do. Maybe that's it. Oh yeah, sure. Like maybe she's upset. I'm, I'm, I'm at work and I wanna make sure that <laughs> people can get their items, sorry. But my point being is that there is so much more 
to this story than what you all are allowing to be told. Stop saying these women are jealous. Stop it. Let it be more than that. How about this? How about the women who actually are in the sport? Do you, do you honestly, let me ask you this. Let me pose this question to you. Do you think, and this is where people get, get caught up and get mixed up. Do you think that every single woman is mad at Caitlin Clark because she's getting paid? Do you think women are mad at Caitlin Clark? Could they be mad at Nike for giving her that deal? Could they be feeling some type of way? Could there be frustration as my girl Molly said today? Yes, of course. But you have to make it more than just that because there's too many new people. Hi, welcome new people who just started watching the WNBA. These newcomers, and I'm talking about analysts included, who just started watching the game just yesterday. I'm keeping it a buck. And FYI, FYI, I'm doing this segment tonight with Bob Costas. He's a legend in the game. Bob is... Bob just told me five minutes ago. Bob Costas told me five minutes ago that guess what? He goes, I'm okay with saying I don't know everything about the WNBA. It wouldn't be smart for me to pretend like I know what's the real element happening here. It's okay to say you don't know. Instead of dumbing it down to every single woman is jealous of Caitlin Clark in the WNBA. So you heard what she had to say. Now, before producing this show, I put up a post on our community board that I want to quickly read because it kind of encapsulates everything that I'm feeling. And then I'm going to really get into what I said, what I'm, what I'm feeling. I said, Stephen A. Smith's biggest mistake was allowing people to come on his show that will later turn around and show him up on TV. This is what happens when you play the role of a glorified simp. He believes that he was giving a stage to women who cover sports to voice their opinions on a large, on his large platform. But instead, what he was getting is them telling him how he should discuss women's women in sports now they're telling him that there is there is a way to talk about women's sports versus men's sports and he must adhere then i went on to say a few other things you guys can go check that out and and and, and kind of leave your thoughts and opinions on that post let me let me let me let me let me just get into this here i don't understand why these women are attacking stephen a smith I don't understand why these women are ganging up on Stephen A. Smith. I really don't understand what, what, I don't understand what they're trying to do here. And as a male watching this is turning me off from even wanting to view the WNBA. I'm just keeping it, I'm keeping it, I'm speaking from the standpoint of a man who watches sports that's beginning to gain some interest in the WNBA and I'm looking at this and I'm like, you know what, I think I'm going to go ahead and pass. And I have the right to say that. Do you know why? Because I'm a viewer. I have I, that, that. Sorry, that's the right of a viewer. You can either enjoy what you're seeing and tune in or not enjoy it and tune off. I'm speaking from the standpoint of someone who's beginning to get turned off. And I'll tell you why. Why are they dictating to Stephen A. Smith how he should talk about women in sports? Why is he doing that? I don't hear men going around telling women how they should talk about sports. So why is she, why is, why are they now doing, why are they now doing that to Stephen A. Smith? Why can't he cover the sport the way he wants to? He says, oh, uh, what uh, they said, he shouldn't use the word jealous. It should be deeper than that. If you listen carefully, Carrie Champion said in that monologue, could there be jealousy? Yes, but it's deeper than that. So the word that he used was okay. So it just means that you're looking for something to complain about because you agree that there could be an element of jealousy and some of those other players and he used that word so you agree with that but the fact that it came out of a man's mouth bothers you that's what all of this is really about let's just listen let's just keep it frank here 94 percent 96 percent 92 percent of our audience are male the problem they have for whatever reason is men or a man is giving his view on a situation that is occurring between women and they don't like the word that he used even though she just agreed with it but then have the courage to now say to refer to monica mcnutt at the very end of her monologue to say but you should have been covering this sport three years ago uh, uh what what so you want me to cover your sport and you want to tell me how i should talk about your sport how about a big hell no how about no? How about I'm going to talk about sports the way I see it and I'm not going to conform to the way you want me to do it. How about that? 
you would find it offense. Just imagine if it was a man telling a woman how you need to talk about the NBA and this and this. And they'll be saying he's bullying her and this and this. And why can't she have the right to express her views and say, what she, why should a man control the way that she thinks? But that's what they're trying to do here. And no one is saying anything about it. Then you got guys in the comment section running up and down, twerking it up all over the place, simping it up all over the comment section, spilling everybody's drink, thinking they doing something. I don't understand what they're angry about and why are all of these women ganging up on Stephen A. Smith? Why? That's what I see happening here. I'm sorry to say it. A bunch of them are ganging up on him. He brought up Jamel Hill in a complimentary fashion by basically saying, I have had an open mind. I have brought women onto the platform. And she takes that. And if you notice, she didn't really have anything sensible to say. She just said that because she just wanted to chime in. Her whole point that she made, made absolutely, she took no real issue. Talking about, well, he's a maker, he's a kingmaker and all of that stuff. The bloody fact is ESPN First Take is one of the biggest platforms in sports media. And if you go on there, it's a benefit to you. Period. End of story. And I'll prove it to you. When was the last time we spoke about Monica McNutt as much as we did just now? No, let's keep it real. When was the last time we spoke about her? And her name is circulating all through our publications all over the internet prior to her being on ESPN this way. So you're going to tell me ESPN First Take has no role? Who are we kidding here? What is it with this need in the United States today for, for, for people to feel like they need to control the way men think, behave, talk? What kind of disgusting, nasty-ass behavior is going on? And I blame the simps of the world that are contributing to it. Is this what's going on in the United States these days? Is this what's going on? You know good and damn well, had it been a man saying what he was saying to women, you need to cover it this way, you need to cover it that way, yo, there would be a public outroar. But now we need to sit down and listen. For what? For what? For what? For what? He said he sent, he senses jealousy. What other words should he use? It needs to be a much more nuanced conversation than that. It needs to be a much more nuanced debate. Last time I heard when they were referring to Russell Westbrook as a blood-sucking vampire, I saw no one, no women anywhere standing up making any noise about it. Because it's commonplace to trash men in sports and women participate in it. There's no nuance in the conversation then, is there? But now there should be a nuance. Now we need to be tactful about the way we discuss this. Oh, please. Go tell that to the birds. Because they're the only ones that will listen. You can go tell that to the birds. I think it's unfair. I think Stephen A. Smith made a mistake. It, that's just my personal view. He made a mistake. And he is seeing what happens when he made a mistake. Not up there trying to basically, so, so what's the argument, your man? So he doesn't, women are much more complicated. Aren't men complicated? I thought we're all human beings. Or maybe it stops at just women. Men aren't complex beings as well. Oh, no. We're not human beings, of course. Because this, needs, this seems to be the standard position in the United States right now. Men are not people. Only women are. So women are the ones when we're discussing them, we should talk about them and deal with them with nuance. And kid gloves, when we talk about men, we can say whatever. I brought up the example yesterday. I'm going to bring it up again. Simone Biles, the American gymnast, when she spoke about the challenges that she was facing mentally and why she had to drop out, she was a sympathy figure to many. But when Paul George was in the Orlando bubble talking about the mental issues and the strain it was having on him, both men and women were laughing at him. Where were the women talking about what well, you know, there needs to be a nuanced debate. We need, to, we need to be careful about the language that we use. There was none of this. Absolutely none of it. But now all of a sudden there needs to be a nuanced con this is the this, now I can I'm beginning to get a glimpse into and, and 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 understand why America has so many issues between men and women. It's because of reasons like this. Jamel Hill, Hill had no point. Let's go over her her comments uh once more if I can find it. Let me see. Can I find oh I I I I I closed the page out. She has no point. She just wanted to chime in. This is what you get, Stephen A. Smith. I hope you're happy. This is what you get when you try to play the role of, oh, I'm going to be the one to bring everybody in. And they're like, okay, we'll come in. And while we come in on your platform, we're going to explain to you how you need to cover sports. Huh? But when we talk about Kyrie Irving and LeBron James and all of these other NBA, there was their jealousy, was there this, was there that. Oh, Shaq and Kobe, was Shaq jealous of this person and that person? Everybody talks about it. It's okay. 
But now because he wants to use the word women, all of a sudden, I mean, use the word jealousy when referring to women. Now all of a sudden, it's Stephen A. Smith, I have a very simple solution for you. Don't invite them on your show anymore. Case closed. Problem solved. Problem solved. And the irony is, at the end, you're going to say to him, but well, why won't you discuss it more? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I don't care who this offends. Do you know why? Because I know there are people that are going to agree with me. Number one. Number two, I'm telling you what I think. I'm not going to say it the way you want me to say it. I'm going to say it the way I, uh, I, I want to say it. It is one of my freedoms. I have a freedom of speech. As long as I'm not insulting anyone, it is my right to say what I believe. I'm not slandering anyone. This is my right. Thank you.